Secretary of State Anthony Blinken has chosen to ignore a special State Department panel that has recommended disqualifying multiple Israeli military and police units from receiving American aid due to their human rights abuses. Now, you would think that this has to do with the ongoing war on Gaza, but it actually does not. So let me give you the details based on the reporting from ProPublica. They write that the incidents under review mostly took place in the West Bank and occurred before Hamas's attacks on October 7th. So with that in mind, Let's talk a little bit about what the incidents are and what this State Department panel is. Remember, this is a State Department panel that has made this recommendation to the Secretary of State who has basically ignored it. So the incidents include reports of extrajudicial killings by the Israeli border police, an incident in which a battalion gagged, handcuffed, and left an elderly Palestinian American man for dead. And an allegation that interrogators tortured and raped a teenager who had been accused of throwing rocks and Molotov cocktails. So I looked into that last case a little more because I wanted to learn more details. And apparently, um, forum officials, like the State Department forum that investigated these cases, actually got a tip from a Palestinian child welfare nonprofit. Then they decided to look into it to see if there was any merit behind the claims, any any reality behind the claims that were being made. And they actually found some credible evidence that the teen had in fact been forced to confess to throwing Molotov cocktails and stones. And then as a result of that, the teenager was subjected to, and this is verbatim what the report said, subjected to both physical and sexual torture, including rape by an object. So the recommendations came from this special committee, the special forum that exists within the State Department. And it's known as the Israel Leahy Vetting Forum, okay? Now the panel is made up of Middle East and human rights experts. It's named after the former Senator Patrick Leahy from Vermont. He was the chief author of this this legislation back in 1997 that requires the United States to cut off assistance to any foreign military that are credibly accused of flagrant human rights violations. And this has actually been used to deny military aid to other countries, including Mexico, for instance. And so recommendations for action against Israeli units were sent to Blinken, the Secretary of State in December, according to one person familiar with the memo. They've been sitting in his briefcase since then, another official said. Multiple State Department officials, according to ProPublica, who have worked on Israeli relations said that Blinken's inaction has undermined Biden's public criticism, sending a message to the Israelis that the administration was not willing to take serious steps. And you know, I wanna pause for a second and there's this, I would refer to it as a conspiracy theory, but now I'm starting to think maybe it's not. Usually the right wing spouts some stuff about how Biden's not really in charge. Mm -hmm. That there are others in charge and Biden's just kind of like this dopey guy that's going along with things. And I'm wondering, you know, there is a disconnect between Joe Biden's statements in regard to Israel's conduct. And then you see what our State Department decides to do. And I'm really wondering, Is Biden in charge when it comes to making decisions in regard to Israel or is it Anthony Blinken? Pausing here to deliver some honest truth as we do in our news coverage as well. TYT is facing challenges, guys, as the entire industry is. You know who could make the difference? You. If you hit the join button below, it's gonna make all the difference and keep us in business. We appreciate you, thank you. Okay, so that's a little bit complicated because the right wing, of course, as always takes things too far. And they're like, no, it's not Obama, it's actually, I'm sorry, it's not Biden, it's actually Obama. Or I think some people even say Michelle Obama. And it's because she's a man and she's like, guys, what are you doing? There's a very simple, I think there's a very simple answer, which is, and, and then they get into the whole deep state stuff. No, look guys, every president has this giant infrastructure around them. And that infrastructure is, the basically the United States government and all of its accumulated policies and expertise and staff, etc. So when Trump comes in, yes, they do disagree with a lot of the things that is part, Trump disagrees with that infrastructure in a lot of ways. That doesn't mean it's a deep state and that they're out to get them, etc. But they do have some US policy that's already established and it's kind of an engine that keeps going. And the president comes in, tweaks here, tweaks there. Mm-hmm. So is Biden in charge of 
all of those policies, does he know all the policies, not just in regards to Israel, but all the foreign countries, domestic policy, etc. No, what's amazing to me is how little the presidents work. So, you know, you go back to even like historical stuff of like Richard Nixon is sitting there drinking all day long. Like it's unbelievable how much he drank and how little work he did in relationship to how much he was drinking. Let alone Lyndon Johnson's drinking, let alone JFK being on yachts with women, etc. Then you get into modern times and Obama played so much golf, it was stunning. And then Trump came in and played four times as much golf. He spent almost an entire year out of the four years playing golf. So the reason I tell you that guys, is because these the presidents are not are only kind of in charge. They get to make the big decisions. They get to say, hey, go in this direction or that direction. But once the apparatus goes in a certain way, it wants to keep going in that mm-hmm. way. So then the president has to fight them pretty hard to get that apparatus to turn around. Okay. Now he can if he wants to, but Trump a lot of times they would get past him because he'd say something stupid like let's do have 10 times as many nukes, which would bankrupt the country. So the apparatus would just ignore him and Trump would forget he said that, right? In Biden's case, he's old, so he's like he loves Israel. I mean, not only just because of the money he's taken from them, but he genuinely like his whole 30, 40 straight years of saying how much he loves Israel, right? Yeah. So even so, it, he just screws up a little bit and goes, "Oh, the Palestinians, you know, it would be nice if they had to say, I don't remember what his slip ups are, right? But something that's nice about Palestinians because he's being asked about it and he wants to seem nice, right? I mean, you, and then they have to reverse him and go, remember, we hate the Palestinians. We're gonna green light everything that Israel does. Okay, let me give a specific example, right? Yeah. So it, while talking to his donors, Biden referred to Israel's conduct as indiscriminate bombing in Gaza. He oh, says that right, yeah. and then uh, you know, his, State Department comes out and they walk it back, walk it back, walk it back. Please, please, please walk it back, walk it back. So look, in the middle of your explanation, I realize, no, 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 wait, hold on. There's the $11 million from APAC in this election cycle that Biden has taken. No, over the course of his career. Oh, Okay, but still $11 million is yeah. no joke. So. And he's the number one recipient of APAC money in United States Senate history. Okay, so he's just trying to placate. Uh, Democratic voters who are furious with the US supporting everything that Israel does. Uh, of course. So that's what it really is. Okay. Uh, so I'm going back to my previous uh, interpretation of this whole situation. Yeah, and, and I do want to comment on the 15 year old boy being abused and all 14. the ex, uh, yeah, and all the special rules we have for Israel. So before we do, I wanted to give you a statement from Josh Paul. If you're uh, unfamiliar with him or if you forgot who he was, uh, he was the State Department veteran who actually stepped down from his position over weapons transfers to Israel. And uh, he makes a really good point here. He says, quote, if we had been applying Leahy effectively in Israel like we do in other countries, maybe you wouldn't have the IDF filming TikToks of their war crimes now because we have contributed to a culture of impunity. That's such a good point because that is an issue. I mean, IDF soldiers keep posting their war crimes on social media. And the reason why they feel comfortable doing it is because they feel they can do so with impunity. Now, even if Anthony Blinken acted on the recommendations made by this panel, well, Israel does get additional special treatment. It's actually baked into the system, right? So yes, Blinken is totally ignoring these recommendations. But even if he took them into account, took them seriously, this is how the process would work specifically for Israel. So the forum, is required to notify the government of Israel about the accusations they're making against them. Then if the forum agrees that there is credible evidence of a human rights violation, the issue goes to more senior officials, including some of the department's top diplomats who oversee the Middle East and arms transfers to the Middle East. Then the recommendation can be sent to Blinken for final approval. So let's say in a perfect world where Blinken actually takes war crimes or human rights abuses that are done by Israel seriously. Even if Blinken were to approve the sanctions, officials said, Israel could blunt their impact. One approach would be for the country to buy American arms with its own funds and give them to the units that had been sanctioned. Officials said the symbolism of calling out Israeli units for misconduct would nonetheless be potent, marking a sign of disapproval of the civilian toll the war is taking. 
But even knowing this, Blinken is uh, totally unwilling to act, to totally unwilling to hold Israel accountable for the war crimes that are being committed. Uh, not only in this war, right, but the human rights abuses uh, that the panel had found Israel to be guilty of in the West Bank. So Jake, this is a good time to weigh in on the 14 year old. Yeah, so uh, every time I debate, Anyone on Israel, they'll say, oh, yes, but how about Hamas atrocities? What they did to the elderly and the rape, etc. And I say, yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, they, I give them that voice because they make it sound like Hamas is so much worse than Israel. But wait, now Israel's killed 30 times the civilians. They have a worst civilian to combatant kill ratio. And it turns out there's rape of young Palestinian boys. And terrible abuse of the elderly until they die. Hmm. But Israel's angels, right? That's why they need special rules. So one of the special rules is we have to check with Israel before we sanction them. Guys, how is this not a joke? And by the way, how is this help? Look, maybe it's helping Israel and their far right wing government, but it is not helping Jewish people across the world. Because when you constantly say, no, Israel is the only country that has special rules, what is that going to do? That's gonna create tons of conspiracy theories. Uh, oh Yeah, here we go again. The one set of people who get special privileges, special rules. And then by the way, even then the State Department goes, no, they're definitely guilty. And the Secretary of State goes, I don't care. I'm not gonna do anything about it. And you think you're helping, again, Jewish Americans, Jews across the world, or even Israel. No, you just keep giving them the green light to do their worst excesses, the Israeli government, right? And when you do that, it smears all Jews across the world. And it, and it just, it's, a, it's an albatross around Israel's neck, or in my opinion, Jews across the world. And all we're doing is aiding and abetting the right wing government of Israel as they drive everyone off a cliff. Both Israel, the Palestinians, and America. So Anthony Blinken, his job is to go, no, 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 special rules for Israel. And then once they we even get past those double extra special rules, they will never be condemned. So Netanyahu, kill anyone you like, genocide anyone you like. And by the way, as a thank you present, we're gonna send you $26 billion. So of course you have a lawless anarch, like guys, power corrupts, absolute power corrupts, absolutely. And right now the right wing government of Israel is corrupt up to its necks and has done all sorts of atrocities. And us aiding and abetting those atrocities doesn't help us or Israel. But nobody can see straight because APAC's got that sweet, juicy money flowing to all of our corrupt, crook politicians. They brag about how they're gonna spend $100 million in this election cycle. What do you think it's gonna go for, the general welfare? No, it's gonna go to bribe people like Anthony Blinken systematically and systemically. And Blinken is gonna go, yes, sir, rape all the boys you like, sir, yes, sir. Yes, kill the elderly, sir. Yes, sir. Prove me wrong, Anthony Blinken. What are you sitting on the report for? Go ahead. What are you sitting on the report for? Your own State Department already said they're guilty. Yeah, that's what I thought. You're not going to release it because you're. I, you guys all work for APAC. Keep it real.